Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's flagship pro program. We go out to all the, the great enterprise shows, extract the signal from the noise, talking to all the users uh, with the digital transformation. Uh, my name's Stu Miniman, joined on this segment by, by my co-host Jeff Kelly, our big data guru, uh, the senator of big data. Uh, pleased to have on this segment uh, Aaron Hughes, systems architecture from the Washington Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife. Aaron, thank you much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, um, so we had a lot of discussions actually about government and the transformation. CIA, obviously a, a big you know, ripple through the industry uh, over the last year. Uh, can you educate us a little bit, you know, what, what's your role uh, and a little bit of the scope of IT inside your department? Well, I, I lead a team that's responsible for uh, server storage virtualization, uh, both on premise and in the cloud. Uh, so I, I, I basically, it keeps me very busy. Uh, Windows Systems Administration, Linux Systems Administration. I wear many hats. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's All right, a uh, little bit, uh, you know, you, you own your own data center, it sounds like. How long have you been using cloud? What's the breakup of your team on on-premises versus uh, in, the, in cloud? How do, you, how do you manage those two different environments? So we have the majority of our, our infrastructure is still on-premise. Uh, we do have, uh, we, we run a, a VMware virtualization on site with NetApp backend storage. Uh, we have, uh, we've been using the AWS cloud for about three years. Uh, three plus years. We've used it for, in terms of, we've, we've uh, leveraged the Glacier services for archival user data backups. Uh, we've, we've leveraged scientific computing capabilities of EC2 instance types. Uh, and, uh, and, and one of the most recent projects uh, that we've had was we, had, we expanded uh, in a, a, a solution that basically was out there to be able to collect citizen science uh, branded data or, or otherwise data, uh, data that we've allowed uh, citizens of, of Washington State to upload anonymously that helps us uh, or the biologists of our, of our agency uh, be able to track uh, uh, species, uh, different uh, wildlife species, and also be able to monitor the ecosystems that they live in. So we expanded out that environment uh, because we, uh, the original, uh, the prototype environment uh, was really only uh, capturing uh, uh, anonymous data, data that was what we categorize as category one, or public data, and it could be shared with anybody. Uh, the new environment is a mixture of both that as well as some sensitive data. Uh, we're now capturing information on uh, species uh, that are protected, so some of those, that, that information cannot be uh, shared with everybody. It has to be, you know, we have to basically vet that data and, be, and we, then we actually only provide some information to our biologists and also to a few people such as the tribes of Washington State, some of the timber companies and, and whatnot, but yeah, it's been a great solution for us. All right, so uh, that, that project, can you, can you walk us through how, what the decision-making process, how that ended up in AWS and, and what yeah. it enabled you to do that you might not have been able to do on your uh, in-house solution? Absolutely, well, it was really, there's a security limitation there policies uh, enforced by uh, Central IT uh, and the Office of the OCIO of Washington State uh, basically stated that we could not uh, uh, basically bring in data from the public anonymously straight into the state government network. So we came up with a solution. I should actually uh, point out uh, one of the, the chief biologists, uh, and data manager for uh, our, our, our agency, Andrew Duff, actually stood up the prototype environment on his own several years ago using a cloud builder uh, with ArcGIS and uh, he, he basically stood that up uh, outside of our organization. We, we, we did a system on, uh, to some degree as far as central IT, our IT organization, our, our department, but that allowed users to anonymously upload photos that were geotagged, you know, basically using their cell phones. You can turn on location tagging that uh, contains G uh, GPS coordinates, and then that information is then fed through an ArcGIS server, uh, then that information is uh, fed up through ArcGIS online and presented to the public. So that was the original prototype, and it was really, and, and before we could then bring that information back down, we then uh, scrubbed that data, made sure it was clean before we brought it back into our internal environment. So it was really, there was multiple reasons, you know, that we started out with the cloud uh, for security purposes, uh, functionality purposes, there's, there's multiple reasons. 
All right, so that so sounds like a great partnership really between the scientists and IT. Can you, you talk bet. a little bit about that dynamic and uh, the, the role of data uh, yeah. in, in your environment? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, it's, the, our scientists, you know, are, are obviously the, the stars of our organization. We're a scientific uh, in, uh, um, um, department, you know, or, or, or agency. You know, that that that's what comes first. Uh, for and, and really, our role is to help support them and, and help uh, bring their vision, uh, you, you know, and make it a reality. You know, there's uh, brilliant people. You know, so being able to use AWS in a system with expanding out that environment was really uh, it was actually a, a awesome for me to be able to do. It's a really cool project to work on. Could you talk a little bit about the relationship between IT and, and the scientists? Uh, I mean, because one of the things that we yeah. found in our research, specifically around the use of data and big data, is big data or small data for that matter, is the there seems to be a disconnect between the IT department who are standing up systems and the business user, in your case scientists, who are trying to actually make sense of all this data and do things with it. Right. IT tends to feel like they're doing a pretty good job based on the feedback we're getting, where the business side says, but we're not getting the insights we need. And there's that kind of disconnect, and of course it's got to be a collaborative environment. Right. How do you approach that? Well, you know, we work closely, you know, the, we, you know, I'm going to mention the Andrew Duff again, he's, you know, the data management, he actually has an IT background in addition to having a biology degrees, so he has, he kind of, he's one of those people that bridges that gap between IT and, you know, we have central IT, but also with each one of the programs also has IT staff. You know, so the wildlife program has IT staff that helps. You know, their you know biologists uh, and, and the scientists that work with them. Fish program has IT staff. The habitat program has their IT staff, and we all work together. We try to work together together as best we can with central IT to help provide them with the solutions that they need uh, to to be able to uh, to to make their uh, to do their work. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about it. I mean, what are some of the some of the insights that that your scientists are finding any some of the, any any of the some some of the more interesting analytic um, kind of aha moments you, you may have seen uh, through the use of data uh, and analysis. Um. Um, let's see, give me an example. Sorry, well, I mean, you know, so we talk, you know, there's, in, in one of the real benefits that we're seeing of some of these new approaches to data are, but you've got, you know, the old ways, you've kind of got the reporting, you ask the question before, ahead of time, you model your data the way you, right. you know, for those questions, and then you, you get the answers. Uh, where in the new model, the new paradigm is, uh, with some of these more unstructured approaches, you can ask any question, and you don't have to necessarily think about it ahead of time, and this, Potentially, can lead to you know new insights that you couldn't have gotten in this kind of older world. Um, you know, it, it may not be an area where that you yeah. have some of those insights, but I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't if that's, work, a, if that's something know, where I guess our, our you know we our data services team. You know, I work I work on the infrastructure. Yep. You know, and for uh, you know, I'd like to be able to answer that question a little bit better. Uh, but you know, they that's I, I I work more on the server storage. We'll have you guys on again. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, sorry. We'll, we'll get the data. No problem. Right. So so Aaron, I wonder if you can unpack for us a little bit the, the, the security environment. Uh, one of the the I guess challenges people have told us is that you know Amazon has great security, but right. it's their security partnership, um, and, and usually you need to expand and work with some of their partners if you want something a little bit, you know, different than off the shelf. Yeah, and that was actually crucial for us to be able to expand the environment that we have right now to be able to to, to maintain the, uh, sensitive data out in the cloud. We had to actually, you know, meet a, a security design review by uh, Central IT for State of Washington, and then later followed up by a desk audit to make sure that we followed those steps to ensure that. You know that we were we were doing everything that we said we were going to do to protect that that environment. So we have reached out. You know we didn't have in this environment that we have. We don't have a direct connect out into the cloud. You know this is a completely separated environment. So we're we're having we had to look for new new tools, new solutions to be able to make sure that we had the correct monitoring. Uh, you know the correct uh, we have the, the security layers that Amazon provides as far as uh, network ACLing and security groups. You know that's one part of it. But our responsibility also is to be able to follow up and make sure that we're we're logging that information uh, and making sure that the appropriate alerting, alerting was taken for the, the, for, for the different types of uh, uh, monitoring that we had to put in place to make sure that that, that environment was secure and stable. All right, and Aaron, uh, how do your security policies span between the, the, the Amazon solution and your in-house offering? 
Well, the, the security, we basically, it depends on the category of data type, you know, and as far as the sensitivity. You know, if, if uh, depending on what, you know, with, with uh, the data, with species data, that's, that is basically category two. So each category of, of data type requires different security measures to be enforced. Uh, so with category two data, we had to make sure that we had logging, we made sure that we that, that everything, that we had firewall rules in place and everything was secure, but it wasn't as stringent as it may have been if like with the CIA's data and things of that nature. So we certainly had to make sure the environment was secure and stable, but, and uh, we had to do our part as far as making sure that you know, the, the basics were being covered with intrusion detection, prevention, firewall, like all that, that good stuff was, was in place. Uh, I don't know if I should mention the exact solution that we're using to, to accomplish that. Uh, Trend Micro Deep Security uh, was, is the product that we, we, we use for that. And uh, it's been a, it, they've been an awesome solution, both you know, for multiple reasons. The functionality they provide, um, and, and I'll, I'll say this, they, their cost models were, were great. You know, they had a lot of great, flexible, you know, we, you know when you work for state government, uh, obviously, well, especially in Washington State, you know, the the, uh, the you're, you're very you're, just, you're scrutinized on what you're spending your money on. So you want to make sure that you're you're getting the best bang for your buck. Yeah, so. Aaron. Uh, you know, it, it was interesting. You know, over beers last night, I was talking to some people and said, you know, in Washington State, you really have not only overcast skies, but you've got the center of the cloud uh, there true. because you've got not only Amazon but Microsoft. Can you talk a little about the IT climate? My understanding, you guys do use some Microsoft still, and uh, looking at some of their cloud offerings too. Yeah, no, I, we we definitely use Microsoft in-house heavily, and we're looking to expand, uh, looking to go to Office 365 and SharePoint Online. So we're definitely looking at uh, some of the uh, the offerings that Microsoft has uh, with Azure as well. But uh, you know, with, with and I've actually done a proof of concept testing with Azure's uh, IIS, and you know, I, I, I'm still you know, of the opinion uh, that the AWS solution, as far as that it goes, is, is still several levels above what, what the Microsoft offers. But Microsoft does offer some really great solutions, and they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're a great partner of ours. All right, so, so Aaron, want to give you the last word on this interview. Uh, Amazon's put a lot of uh, you know, effort into the government solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your takeaway from this show? Uh, what events that they've been having uh, for, for, for yourself and your peers uh, that, that, you, that you take away and tell other people why it's valuable to come to events like this? Well, you know, I, I, you know one of my, my job duties is I have, to, I have to procure new hardware. I have to procure new infrastructure. We invested a very large sum of money uh, last year in new network infrastructure for both storage on site and as well as compute on site. And I would really love to have the ability to extend our network out to the cloud, uh, you know, like the CIA has done, leveraging the GovCloud to be able to leverage and have Amazon take over more of that infrastructure as a service. So, you know, really my, I, I would, I really hope, you know, I, I get to come back next year and I get to tell a story of how we were able to extend our network out to the cloud and save our, our taxpayers a considerable lot of money by using AWS's resources for storage instead of continuing to spend a lot of money on internal infrastructure. All right, Aaron Hughes from Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Really uh, appreciate you coming and share with us how uh, you know Great. tech like the cloud is helping improve uh, you know livestock and the, the wolf population and everything. A really interesting story. Appreciate you taking the time. We will be back with lots more coverage here uh, from Reinvent 2014 after this quick break. <laughs>